Hello, my name's Andrew Brooks and welcome to another look through my Beatles record collection. Today we're going to be focusing on Dark Horse Records. Now this is a label which, although is very prominent in the Beatles world, doesn't really get much of a look in. Um, so I thought I'd dig out my vinyl. Um, these are only the LPs, singles and 12-inch singles come later. But um, anyway, I thought you would enjoy looking at my Dark Horse Record collection. Hello again. So, as I said, we're going to be looking at my collection of uh, Dark Horse Records, which forms part of the Beatles collection. Dark Horse Records, for those who don't know, uh, was set up by George Harrison in 1974. Um, it was set up so George could help promote new artists, much as he did in uh, when Apple Records were uh, just starting up. So he wanted to you know, increase uh, new artists into the uh, into the label, and he then decided to set up Dark Horse Records to continue this as well as eventually put out his own records. Um, he was contracted to EMI and Apple until 1976, so two years early he formed Dark Horse Records, and initially um, he signed up people, obscure people, Ravi Shankar, um, Attitude, a anyway, uh, we'll explain, so we'll come on to them in a minute. So the first record from Dark Horse Records uh, as an LP was actually by a band called Splinter, I've got two copies of the uh, record here. One's English and one's American. This is the American one, and this is the English one, or the British one. Now, they, they differ slightly because, um, I, I'll show you, I hadn't prepared, but I'll show you. I'll just take it out of its sleeve. The English one has a, excuse me, has a split front cover. So it's like a gatefold sleeve, like this, which then opens up and open it up like that and the record is housed in this fabulous dark horse sleeve like that and of course the fabulous dark horse label okay, right way up clean there we are so this is splinter this was george's first signing to uh to his new label and the album uh, the place i love um, was issued on it and it comes with a nice lyric sheet there and as I say, the uh, the British one has um, like a split gatefold sleeve, and that's the reverse. And the American one just has a standard um, gatefold sleeve, again with the dark horse um, inner sleeve in a bag. Um, the British one is sort of sturdier cardboard. The American one appears to be just paper, and the Lyric sheet is uh, is not to be seen in the American one. I'm not sure if it originally came with it or not, but um, there we are. So that's Splinter, the place I love. His next signing was um, a friend of his. I'll move it around so hopefully the, the, you'll be able to see it through the uh, glare. This is Ravi Shankar, and it's called Shankar Family and Friends. Um, as you can see, there's uh, Ravi Shankar, his family, and his friends, because on the back a nice picture of Ravi and George and I should imagine that uh, it was produced by George and I'm uh, and uh, he actually uh, composed uh, I'm Missing You and arranged it so uh, there we go that was the second uh, Dark Horse album I'll open it up so we can uh, have a look and see what the uh, inner sleeve is like if there is one these are quite collectible now Standard in the sleeve, uh, dark horse in the sleeve. Quite flexible now, Dark Horse Records. Uh, it's overlooked for quite a while. And then uh, obviously people have realised that uh, George played a prominent part in it. Now this one is in a, a plain white sleeve with just a Dark Horse sticker on it. Unfortunately, uh, I don't have the original sleeve. It's uh, like a greeny sleeve. But this is a promo album for Dark Horse. And it gives you little snippets. Oh, I'll see if you can focus on that. Gives you little snippets of um, the Dark Horse catalogue so to speak up to that point. It's got bands like Attitudes, um, Jiver, Splinter um, and one that's going to be coming up very very soon, Henry McCulloch um, as well as uh, Stair Steps and Ravi Shankar. 
Henry McCulloch, obviously from Wings. So there's a, another Beatles connection there. Moving on to Splinter's second album, um, it's this one. It's called Harder to Live. This is an American copy, and uh, it says here on the back, recorded at Fryer Park Studios, George's uh, home studios. Um, George plays on guitar on it, Billy Preston, Jim Keltner and uh, there's a picture of the bands and their musicians and a cardboard cut out of George. So, there we go. That's a, that's a cool one. Splinter are actually quite like. They're, they're a nice band if you, uh, if you can get into them. Okay, as I previously mentioned, um, Henry McCulloch, and there's, there's one of his albums there, uh, also signed to Dark Horse, but was also a uh, guitarist uh, for Wings, uh, the early incarnation of Wings. So this is his Dark Pulse album. It's called uh, Mind Your Own Business. Um, nice drawing of uh, Henry there, and that's him uh, on the black pane harmonica. So this is a promo copy, and uh, I was quite surprised that when I opened up the promo copy to show you these today, I actually found a copy of a press kit inside. Totally forgotten it was in there. So uh, I'll open it up for you now, and we can see what's inside together. It looks like there's um, a glossy photo of uh, Henry McCulloch, yeah. and then there's uh, a bit of blurb from Dark Horse Records. Same picture again, two-page blurb, just telling you about uh, the fact that he was 18 months as a uh, guitarist in Wings, um, and he was also uh, the man from the Grease Band. So there we are. And then there's a uh, little pull-out thing there. It's got hole punches, so presumably it must have been in some ring binder. Um, there we are. New music on Dark Horse Records. So that's quite cool to have. And as I found that um, when I uh, discovered it, I had it as a promo. So moving on. The next one is a Ravi Shankar album. Again, music festival from India. Nice, beautiful colour picture there of Ravi Shankar in front of me, and just there is George. And then uh, on the reverse, see there, and uh, it tells you all the uh, all the musicians there, and uh, lists them who they are on the front cover. Um, again, recorded in Friar Park, but this time it says recorded in Ye Drawing Room at Friar Park. That's quite cool. So far we haven't even had a George album yet, all these albums on Dark Horse, and we still haven't got one. The next one was a band called Attitudes, um, that's their uh, album cover, no picture, just a very 70s um, album, cover design, uh, and on the back it's just a standard blurb, and uh, it says in here, um, I'm just trying to see if there's any, uh, any mention of George anywhere, I can't see it, other than it's record company. I'm sure he must have had some hand in it. Oh yes, special thanks to Oh Not Him Again, which of course is George. And it comes in the standard sleeve and on the regular Dark Horse label. Yeah. We do find these cropping up occasionally. Not They're not very common, but you over here we I find them maybe one or two a year will, will sort of work their way to a charity shop and, uh, and I usually rescue them pick them up just because uh, I love it. Okay, we're now moving on to George's first um, album on his own label and it's uh, 33 and a third. I'll take, take one of them out of the uh, out of its protective wrapping. Oh, this one looks like it's still sealed um, inside. Let's have a look. Yeah. Yes, this is uh, an American copy, you can tell because it's uh, embossed at the top. It's got silver writing embossed across the top and 33 and a third across the bottom. Uh, but this is a sealed copy, very nice. Um, so I'll show you the, the British one which doesn't have embossed writing, it's just a regular printed sleeve. I can open it quickly. But, uh, some great photos in here. So that's the front cover. Um, released for his 33 and a third birthday. 
there's the inside cover, lots of nice photos, and the reverse cover, a uh, nice picture of George with some funky sunglasses. Inside, the lyrics are printed uh, on the back of the inner bag, and on the front, this, uh, just tells you all about it. That's that. But superseding that, George actually did a bit of publicity, and he sent out a record to um, radio stations, which was an open-ended interview. So basically, the DJ could ask George a question, pre-prepared -pre question, and then he'd play the answer that George gave. So um, it's a personal music dialogue with George Harrison uh, for the promotion of 33 and 3rd. And on the back, you can see um, all the breaks, and it tells you which song to play, how long it lasts. So you can, you can plan your radio station. Um, program, which presumably must have been about an hour, I think. Um, open it up, standard dark full sleeve, and there we are, I'll just show you. This is a promotional item, side one and side two, um, that's cool. Uh, and once again, I found, with the promo, with the promo copy, I found a press kit. Um, so there's the press kit again with the dark pulse on the front. So we open it up like that. So we've got some nice uh, pictures of George there, shots from the album inside. And then we also have um, some writing, George Harris' selection of tunes and title, about 33 and a third. Um, visions and values on 33 and a third. The two sides of George Harrison, and then a very nice um, chronology, um, basically starting in February the 25th, 1943, obviously his birthday. And then last of all, George Harrison, all you need is love, um, some more writing. Uh, and then to go with that, which I was very pleased to discover that I hadn't sold when I had a little, uh, a little cull of the collection few years ago, and I've still got, amazingly, a full um, in mint condition poster advertising 33 and a third, so I'm going to open it up, there we go, um, I'd love to get that framed, I have got enough room there, uh, so that's the poster for the album. So next on the Dark Horse label was uh, another album by Attitudes, um, so on the two sides, I'm not sure which is the uh, front and which is the back, because they, uh, they both have the same uh, thing, just different photos. And then inside, um, a, a nice picture bag this time, not the Dark Horse one, however it is a standard. Dark Horse label. Uh, this is an American copy. I haven't got a British one. But, um, so again, special thanks to uh, to George and the other good people at Dark Horse Records. Uh, I'm just trying to see if there's any mention of George playing on it. I'm sure he, I'm sure he must have done somewhere along the line. So that was the uh, second attitude or uh, the next attitude album. Now we're coming up to uh, George again. This is. Uh, Self-titled album, George Harrison. It's got a little hype sticker for Blow Away in it. Um, I'll put this one up because it's got a very nice inner bag. So that's the front cover. That's the reverse. And uh, inside, um, picture with uh, Jackie Stewart talking about Faster, um, which obviously was the uh, single that was released uh, fundraiser. For um, I think it was Gunnar Nielsen, um, but there we are. And then there's the lyrics there. On the other side. Okay. Um, now we're reaching the realms of when I was buying the records on the day of release, because uh, I never bought any of those on day of release. However, I did buy this one, and this was the first George album I bought on the day of release. And of course, it's uh, somewhere in England. 
and I meant to dig out my bootleg copy which had the alternate sleeve but I'm sure you're all familiar, familiar with that. Um, this uh, background is a painting um, called a Holland Park study um, or a study of Holland Park Avenue rather again with a hype sticker up there for all those years ago. Um, this was on display at the Tate uh, Britain in London and then later uh, up at the Tate in Liverpool and I remember going in there with some friends and the lady in the she couldn't understand why people kept asking for this particular painting and uh, anyway eventually she fell in and there's a picture of George walking away from it so you can see how large the painting actually is and I've actually got this as a backdrop um, it's my wallpaper on my computer if you google it you can find it and then uh, you can set yours up similar um, so there's the inner bag uh, there was a few contractual problems the record company didn't like George's first attempt at the album so they sent him away and said could do better so he then came up with another version of the album took out some songs put some new songs in which uh, they liked and uh, some of the songs have remained unreleased to this day. They did appear briefly on um, a, a special book that he did, uh, Songs of George Harrison, and you could, you could get them as, a, as an LP, uh, as a 45 or a CD, as part of this book uh, through Genesis Publications. But to this day, I don't believe they've actually been officially released. So the next one up was the next George album, which was Gone Troppo. Um, this was basically a contractual obligation album. Um, there was zero publicity, although I did actually once have a poster advertising it. This is a promo copy, I don't know if you can see in the top corner there, gold lettering, promo copy. So that's the front cover, um, an old picture of George. But on the reverse you've got a new picture of George and the other musicians. And I believe inside it just tells you uh, inside how to make cement. One bucket of water, three shovels of sand, to one bucket of shovel of cement, more water if sand is dry. Um, and then on the back, there's the lyrics. I, I quite like this album. It's not, it doesn't crop up very, um, very often in people's top tens, but uh, I actually quite like it. And then while I was trawling through my record collection, digging out all the, all of them, I found this. Um, and I, I couldn't, I couldn't for the life of me remember what it was. So I pulled it out, and it's a very nice very nice white label test pressing and all it's just got written on the bag George Harrison uh, gone troppo and it is literally just the record on a white label test pressing so I'm very pleased to find that I still had that just looking to see if that was George's signature it's very similar but I don't believe it is I'll double check that so uh, that's the test pressing for gone troppo now we're coming towards the end um, the next one up was Cloud Nine, which was sort of George's comeback album, got my mind set on you, was on it. Um, Smash number one, all over the world, I think, certainly in America and the UK. Inside, this is an American copy, um, I believe. Yeah, so uh, it's uh, very nice there. Pictures inside. And actually, this is. Oh, this is a Spanish copy. There we go. Didn't realise I had a Spanish copy of it. So that's Cloud Nine. Um, there was another um, Dark Horse release of uh, the concert, the Japanese concert, but unfortunately I haven't got that one. And it was, a lot of these have been re released just recently, a few years ago, by Danny and Olivia. Um, basically re-release them and uh, put them back out on vinyl. So the next one is la George's last album and to my knowledge it's the last new album that's appeared on uh, the Dark Horse label. But I think Danny wants to uh, put some new stuff out. This is Brainwash, the posthumous uh, album by George, um, sadly after he, uh, after he died, but Danny finished off the tracks with the help of Jeff Lynne and uh, there we are. On the back, up like that, and the inner bag on one side. Oh, there's two because it's gatefold. There's two things. What's this? This is a booklet, which is very nice with the lyrics, some pictures in it. 
and then on the other side that's the inner sleeve it's very heavy this vinyl must be 180 gram I reckon and uh, there it is that's the B side just a blank dark horse label and that's the A side so that concludes my dark horse uh, LP collection as I say that doesn't include the 7 inch singles or, the, or even the 12 inch singles but uh, I hope you enjoyed it let me know please rate subscribe and thumbs up and all those other things you've got to do um, always welcome in new subscribers uh, there's been a few just recently and uh, I'd like to say thank you for watching and enjoy yourself remember in these days of lockdown stay safe keep washing your hands and uh, just stay indoors listen to some Beatles records Thank you.